call this meeting of the Carpentersville Village Board to order. Mike, we please call the roll. Trustee Burroway. Here. Trustee Stevens. <coughs> Trustee Humphrey. Here. <coughs> Trustee Savvy. Here. Trustee Rayburn. Trustee Schultz. Here. President Ritter. Here. And uh, Trustee uh, Stevens <coughs> and Rayburn both called me this evening with illnesses mm -hmm. and felt that they were better off not infecting the rest of the board, so they decided they better stay home. I do not see an invocator, so we'll stand up just for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have one proclamation this season, evening recognizing October 9 to 15th as Fire Prevention Week in the village of Carpentersville. And so I will read the proclamation. For as the village of Carpentersville, Illinois is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Carpentersville. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally and homes are where people are at the greatest risk from fire and whereas U.S. fire departments responded to 369,500 home fires in 2014 according to the National Fire Protection Association and whereas one-fifth of all homes with smoke alarms, the smoke alarms are not working. And whereas three out of five home fire deaths result from fires in properties without smoke alarms, 38%, or with no working smoke alarm, 21%. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half, and whereas many Americans don't know how old the smoke alarms in their homes are, or how often they need to be replaced, and whereas all smoke alarms should be replaced at least once every 10 years, and whereas the age of smoke alarm can be determined by the date of its manufacture, which is marked on the back of the smoke alarm, and whereas Carpentersville first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education, and whereas Carpentersville residents are responsible to public education measures and are able <coughs> are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas the 2016 Fire Prevention Week theme, don't wait, check the date, replace smoke alarms every 10 years, effectively serves to educate the public about the vital importance of replacing smoke alarms in their homes at least every 10 years and to determine the age of their smoke alarm by checking the date of manufacture on the back of the alarm. Now therefore, I add Ritter, President of Carpentersville, do hereby proclaim October 9 to 15, 2016 as Fire Prevention Week throughout this village. I urge all people in Carpentersville to find out how old the smoke alarms in their homes are, to replace them if, they're not more, if they are more than 10 years old, and to participate in many public safety activities and efforts in Carpentersville Fire and Emergency Services during Fire Prevention Week 2016. Dated and signed at the Village of Carpentersville, Kane County, Illinois, this fourth day of October 2016, Ed Ritter, Village President. Again, I must say we have a wonderful fire department. They do a lot to educate the public, but they still can't do everything you need to take your own responsibility. Checking smoke alarms is a simple thing that you can do to assure the safety of your family. So please check that alarm out. What does they say? Change the battery every time you change your clock. That's twice a year, and that's a good rule to follow. Okay, we have no appointments, confirmations, or administrations of oath. Uh, Mike tells me we have no commenters this evening. So we'll move on to the consent agenda. <clears throat> All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of those items unless a trustee so requests. 
in which event the items will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Any items to be removed? Item B, if you please. Item B. B. A motion to pass the consent agenda without item B. A second. Okay. Motion, Paul. Second, Jeff. Uh, Mike, call the route roll for all items except B. Trustee Stevens. Trustee Humphrey. Yes. Trustee Savvy. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Trustee Burley. Yes. Some uh, important things as always, such as a uh, settlement agreement through one of our insurance companies and uh, bidding for uh, equipment for Carpenter Park, but they're on the uh, consent agenda, so you don't get to hear about those as much. I will just highlight those two. So we will go back to item B, ordinance granting a special use permit for a cartage establishment at 1009 Tamarack Drive. I'll, I'll, mo a motion. I'll motion to pass this. Motion, Paul. I'll second. Second, Pat. Uh, comments or questions? Well, I just had a couple of questions is all, really. Yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, I was just wondering um, <clears throat> uh, about the uh, size of, these are fuel trucks, right, that are going to be parked over there? Yes, they're um, they're not full size tanker trucks. Okay, they're the smaller tanker trucks. Yeah, they're tanker trucks, but I don't remember how many wheels. But they're not the full size right uh, semi rigs. Semi rigs. Tanker tanker. They're just I the ones that go to sites like you would see uh, somebody doing uh, in the old days. You know the uh, fuel oil for homes. That right. Size truck. Something exactly. Like that, if that you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was wondering about that, and uh, also, don't we have another cartridge company over there on Terramont? Uh There was a, a special use permit that was issued some time ago for across the street, right? And he still hasn't completed any of his plans for uh, rehabbing the site, so he can open his business there. So yes, there was one that we did maybe a year and a half, two years ago, or something, something like that. Right. That never came to fruition yet. That's correct. Okay, a and that's what I was wondering about. If those two, those two truck operators in there at the same time, will that put a, uh, undue stress on our roads? Uh, that's a good question, but um, we didn't look at it from that aspect. You Absolutely. know, there is yeah. uh, the roads were designed for the you know truck traffic anyway, so. Um, you know, the combination of both shouldn't be an impact because the road. Now, when they store them. trucks there and working on them and stuff, will, will there, would those, those trucks be empty? Uh, maybe. The, the, the plan for the cartage, the fuel, mm -hmm. uh, is to go somewhere else and get it, mm -hmm. you know, based on all of their accounts that they have to do, right. or they have to deliver to. They're going to be delivering to construction operations. Right. Uh, they're going to be delivering to, uh, you know, other locations that need fuel oil or whatever they need for generators, whatever the case may be. And they're, in, they're, they're going to other locations to get the fuel with the trucks, and then they're, they're going to deliver. So there may be some times where they have some in the truck, but no, there's not fuel storage that's permitted okay. on the site. Okay. So they can't have a truck there for an extended period just for, you know, storage. Purposes. Storing fuel. That's correct. Okay. And... Uh, <coughs> that the building that they're go moving into, um, they'll be working on repairing trucks there, yes. right? Yes, they're gonna Just do a truck repair, repair inside. Yeah, that was one of the conditions that, you know, if you recall on the ordinance, they're required to put in the triple basin. The triple basin is for the floor drains in order so they can do the repairs and anything that, you okay. know, yeah, hydraulics, let's fuel, bring that, that forward so people know that there is a system in place to trap that <coughs> oil or whatever is, is uh, you know, spilled, actually. Yes, sir. That's one of the requirements of it. They're also required to get uh, a fire sprinkler system in there, uh, right. too. So, Okay. Thank you. I, I have a quick question. Mark, what would be our um, inspection schedule for a business like that? Just normal, or do well, we would we have it a little more frequent because... Yeah, I would have to defer on, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the fire hazard from the fuel? Or right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would have to defer to the fire department. I don't know if there's 
we haven't established a specific schedule yet. Okay. Uh, we haven't received the building permit or any applications yet, so none has that has been established. From a building perspective, we wouldn't have uh, uh, a frequency, except uh, occasionally we would go look at the triple basin to make sure it was being maintained. Mm -hmm. From from you know the building and plumbing perspective, fire would be responsible for addressing flammable liquids and you know okay. those type of fire safety issues. Okay, thank you. Uh, that building would be inspected on an annual basis uh, for fire code compliance, but then also the Office of the State Fire Marshal uh, believes inspects the tanks that would be oh, on, okay. on site mm -hmm. and has to certify those tanks. Mm, okay. All right. Yeah, Thank they're not you. planning on installing any tanks. Oh. But just the tank or truck. The tank the or tank truck, or truck is the only so thing that's right, right. Then the regulatory um, issues that go along with the DOT. Yeah, for, so the annual for the fire inspections. Yeah. Would mm -hmm. For the trucks the itself. Yeah. Okay. Any other further questions? No, Paul? no questions, but just clarification. Uh, just make sure the audience knows that we're talking about our industrial area mm -hmm. right. of where this will be located. This will be near the public works facility, Maple and Tamarack, so it's not in a residential area. And it is right on the truck route, which is Maple mm -hmm. Avenue, so the mm -hmm. streets are built to take them, but they'll generally not be too heavy. They'll be empty. They'll leave empty and come back empty unless <coughs> they have to come in for a repair. So, right. It'd be actually kind of a good truck use. So it won't be too heavy. They won't be hauling hundred thousand pounds or whatever on tractor it. trailers. They're not. Any other questions? If not, uh, Mike, call the roll, please. Trustee Humphrey. Yes. Trustee Savi. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Rayburn. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Trustee Burroway. Yes. And Trustee Stevens. Okay, that would conclude our uh, consent agenda. We're ready for reports of manager, officers, commissions, and staff. And the first one is a guest presentation. Mark, do you want to introduce? Yes, Roxanne doesn't need much of an introduction except for those at home as the director of the Fox River I always want to say just Fox Valley Libraries, but it's Fox River Valley Libraries. Dundee and Oaks are the two locations here in the community currently, and the idea is for the construction of a new facility, and, and Roxanne is here to kind of brief the board as well as the general public on that program and the progress and the, what will be on the ballot this fall. So, Roxanne? First of all, thank you for... Uh, letting me address you this evening for taking the time. I'm going to try to uh, make the best use of your time and keep it as brief as possible. Um, and yep, that'll swing around so that I can see yeah, here and there. Just turn it all the way around and you, it'll actually swivel all the way to the back if you want. I'm going to be able to see this too. So. Okay, I'm going to do the best I can here. All right. Um, first of all, I'm not here to debate merits of the proposal or convince anybody how to vote one way or another. Uh, basically, just prov provide the factual information. There's a lot of false information out there, and we want to be sure that voters know what it is that they're voting on this fall. Uh, so, as you know, the board, the uh, library board, placed a tax measure on the ballot uh, for November, and that question asked voters to improve increasing the tax rate for library services by 21 cents per hundred dollars of net taxable value. And we'll talk about the actual cost impact of that in a minute. Uh, but the big thing that people, uh, many people don't know is that that proposal has been reduced by 40 percent from the original proposal that was sent out uh, to the public in May. This is a graph showing square footage versus population, square footage of facilities, in uh, the red line here. Um, so uh, over the last 20 years, facilities have been remained primarily level. This little bump here shows uh, when we added the branch on the west side, uh, the temporary branch in the Randall Oaks Rec Center. Um, the uh, purple line shows the population, and it's not a smooth or you know year by year. Um, it's based on uh, census data, so it only that number gets adjusted you know, every 10 years or five years in cases of special censuses, et cetera. Um, and I understand the village has a special census recently which they'll be adding to that, but it's not included here. 
What that, um, what that does when you have this kind of population growth versus while facilities stay the same is it reduces the items held per capita, uh, which basically reduces choice. So patrons have fewer things to choose from uh, when they're in the facilities. Despite the lack of choice, our circulation has gone up significantly in the last 10 years, more than doubling. In fact, last year we checked out about 600,000 items. Um, about half of those were books, a third of them are DVDs. Um, I get questions all the time about the number of ebooks. You can see that here. Ebooks is about 7% of our circulation. Ebook um, checkouts increase very rapidly up to about 2014 and then since then it's pretty well leveled out industry uh, statistics show that from bookstores and Amazon etc also that uh, ebook adoption has leveled out um, about 20 percent of the population prefers to read in electronic format and about 80 percent don't they prefer the print that's also borne out has been borne out in a uh, survey by our own users as well so libraries see uh, e-books as an additional format. We need to have the same title in electronic format, but we also need to have it and still have it in print. Uh, we've had a 166% increase in program attendance in the last 10 years. That would have been uh, greater if we had more program space. We're regularly turning people away uh, because programs are full and we don't have any meeting room availability. Uh, last year we had nine days in which the meeting, our meeting and program room was not in use out of the whole year. So like you, we have a process for addressing needs as population grows. Um, we do studies, do our homework, uh, surveys. Um, we bring in experts to do needs assessments based on standards, based on looking at other libraries. We bring in architects and designers, engineers to say what, must, what might it look like, and then we uh, bring in the cost estimators to help us figure out how much would it cost. Once we have the costs, then we go out to the public and we share that information, and we did that this spring. Uh, in May and June, we sent a mail survey out to 17,000 uh, voter households uh, in the library district and we got a 10% return rate on that. The survey results are on our website. I'm going to give you the, um, the uh, URL uh, is at the end of the presentation. Um, we also convened a citizen task force from across the district, and those folks looked at the survey results, all of the work that the consultants did. They also did comparisons um, with tax rates of our neighboring libraries. Uh, as you can see, Fox River Valley is down here currently at 21 cents per hundred. The original proposal would have had us up at 57 percent. That was, you know, much, you know, way too large an increase. Um, the task force felt that a 40, 42 percent or 42 cent total tax rate was um, a better would put us in a better position in terms of our, uh, our neighbors. As you can see, Algonquin uh, to our north is at 62 cents and Gail Borden's at 53 cents. Uh, Roxanne, just yes. at, at this point, what's our current rate then? Current, current rate is 21 cents. It's 21. the purple. Oh, I see it's on there. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I just yeah. grab it. Yeah, right down here. So, so we're, near, we're near the bottom of that. And library, the library taxes are about 2% of a person's bill. So they also looked at square foot per capita um, of compared to neighboring libraries. Again, we're, we're at about a half a square foot per person right now. Um, the old rule of thumb, back when they were just using um, you know, square foot per capita to determine um, optimum facility size, and when they weren't doing uh, computers, et cetera, et cetera, it was mostly books, one square foot per capita was a standard. For many years, one square foot per capita was the standard. Um, now we're doing not only books, but we're also doing a lot of other things as well. Um, you can, so you can see, you know, Gail Borden, all of the, the libraries that, you know, many of the folks that are moving to our area are coming from these areas. 
and are coming from areas that have um, a higher quality of library service. So the current proposal would put us not quite up there with the rest of them, but close. So after looking at all of the um, information, the Citizen Task Force came back with four recommendations. They recommended to reduce the tax rate uh, to 21, a 21 cent increase, which would give us a total tax rate of 42 cents. Uh, they said scale back improvements to the Dundee Library. Um, we'll look at some pictures in a minute. Um, and construct the new West Side Library. Um, they confirmed that the location for a proposed West Side Library was a good location um, and suggested that we downsize that new library based on what was left after we did renovations for, for um, the Dundee Library. So we went back to the drawing board, looked at what could we do with 21 cents and how could we um, allocate it so that we could get money to operate as well as money to build. Um, because if you add a building, you need to be able to keep that, those doors open. So you need staff for that building, you need materials for that building, you need utilities, um, you know, programming funds, et cetera. Um, so 50% of the increase would be allocated to construction and remodeling, 20% uh, to staff, and 30% to maintenance and operations, and that does include, again, all the materials, um, programming, utilities, um, there's a whole lot that goes into that 30% bucket. Um, right now, our, ra our ratio of staffing cost to our total cost, staffing is about 60% of our costs. So you can see from looking at this model that we're not uh, planning, we're not getting anywhere near doubling staff. We're adding incrementally to staff. Uh, for the most part, it would be uh, lower level employees used to keep the doors open. Um, most of them part-time, most of our employees at that level are part-time. Um, so improvements to the Dundee Library, we would be doubling the size of the children's area. We need to reclaim the space that was vacated by Dundee Township when they moved their offices. Um, that area needs to be gutted, uh, HVAC needs to be completely redone, uh, but we can, um, we can actually add to the children's area um, by using that, and that's an area which in which we have a large amount of need. If you visit the Dundee Library um, during the evening after school, you'll see it's packed, it's busy. We have lots of children using that facility uh, and their parents. Um, also, we'd add some computer, a computer training lab and study rooms. We're always turning away students from Dundee Crown, groups of students from Dundee Crown who want to come over and study together. So this would give them a place to, you know, to go into a room and not be bothering everybody else while they're working three and four at a table and spreading their materials out. Um, uh, we'd do some upgrades to safety exits and we'd be able to sprinkler the building. The building has no sprinkler system right now, no s fire suppression system. Uh, the west side building would be about 40,000 square feet, about 10,000 of that give or take 8,000 to 10,000 would be um, staff space. We would move administrative offices to that building so that we could use the space at the Dundee Library that's now being used for administrative offices for public space. So we would end up in the end with two libraries about the same size in terms of public space, uh, one on the east side and one on the west side. Um, all of the features of a modern library would be included there as well. Um, the look of both facilities inside would be very similar. So the West Side Library, this was the original proposal. Um, the areas that are circled are what change in a reduced scenario. Um, you can see it gets a little lower. And then more dramatically from the back side, we end up removing this whole back section. So the front portion of the building, other than the height, stays pretty much the same. The back, uh, we cut off a portion of the back, and what that does is leave us with a building 
that can easily be added on to later. We end up with, as I said, a library on either side of the district. This balances the district out pretty well in terms of uh, access for residents in various parts of, um, you know, particularly Gilbert's, the west side of Carpentersville, Algonquin areas. Um, you know, these folks, it takes them a, a long time to get down to uh, the Dundee Library for programs, et cetera. At the moment, we don't have any program space over at Randall Oaks, so anything that we're delivering there is delivered on the floor, essentially. The ballot question is a limiting rate question. It's pretty simple, um, even though it's, you know, written by attorneys. The statutes, Illinois statutes, <coughs> determine what we can say. So this isn't like the Long Meadow Parkway question. We didn't craft the question. Um, this. Uh, the ballot language comes directly from uh, what's required by state law. Um, basically, it just means are people willing to increase the tax rate from 21 cents to 42 cents? The impact on a home with a $100,000 fair market value, um, and, and we find that a uh, fair number of these on the east side of Carpentersville. Um, the impact there would be about $70 a year, and that's without taking into account homestead exemption or senior exemption. Those two exemptions would lower that impact uh, for residents who are eligible. Um, on the west side, uh, your averages are higher. For all of Dundee Township, the average is $178,000 uh, average fair market value and uh, impact for $180,000 fair market value home is $126 a year. And again, that's the impact, <coughs> that is the additional tax, that is not the total library tax. Because our tax rate is now about 21 cents, just under 21 cents, and we're looking to add 21 cents, from rough estimate, you can double these, and that's about the total that the person would be paying for property taxes for the library. The reasons to do it now, um, your financing, um, your, your financing projects, et cetera. We're aware that uh, rates are historically low uh, right now and that construction costs go up, so the longer you wait, the more it costs. Um, we do have a lease on the Randall Oak space that's up next August. Uh, beginning in August, we can extend it six months at a time uh, for up to, uh, up until 2022. We do have to start paying we had paid for the initial five years up front uh, in order to get that agreement, um, but we would start paying in August of next year to extend, so we would be taking the money um, that we'll be spending money on rent that we could be investing in a new building. And at in 2022, uh, when the initial contract was negotiated, the Park District's plans were to use that space by 2022, so we have no assurances that we will be able to extend it beyond that. We have a referendum facts page on our website. It looks <coughs> like this, front page of the website looks like this. If you go to the About Us drop down, uh, referendum facts is uh, the, lo the uh, bottom item. The page looks like this. There's a tax calculator here. Uh, residents can look at their own tax bill and enter the fair cash value of their property from their tax bill, what the tax assessor says their property's worth, check a box, whether they're eligible for homestead exemption and senior exemption, and it will calculate for them what their tax impact would be. And there's also a lot of questions. There's a frequently asked questions. We've actually, um, the look of the page has changed just a little bit um, since we took this screenshot. Um, but the uh, survey is up there district maps up there, needs assessment, you know, some planning documents, et cetera. So all that information is there. Any questions? So this will be on the ballot, <coughs> all of these areas, Gilbert, Elgin, Sleepy Hollow, Carpentersville. Every, every uh, homeowner who's inside the library district. Is it, does it just need a majority to win or is it? it does. 
Yeah, Roxanne, uh, will the physical address of the new location be West Dundee? Um, I assume so. That property, the property is not yet annexed. Okay, so it'll be annexed into West Dundee? I expect so. That's the plan. How did you decide on that site out there? The um, feedback from residents um, let us know that they really liked the proximity to the recreation center mm -hmm. and the ball fields. Mm -hmm. And so as we were looking, that, uh, that site was you know, available. So and it's uh, 11 acres though, isn't it? It is 11 acres. So is the library going to be built on a just a particular segment of it, leaving the rest of it as an open space or the ability to, would you would own that property then, so you would have the ability to sell it down the road if you needed to, right? Any additional acreage if you didn't need it all. That's an option. Yeah. That's an option. Um, drainage needs to be right. mm -hmm. included there as well. Mm -hmm. We're still in the process of negotiating on that property, so um, you know it's not set in stone <coughs> yet. Mm -hmm. You know the board mm -hmm. does have a contract. the The final acreage amount has not been finalized. That may yet change. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just my only the only thing I keep hearing is that uh, w you know why eleven acres? Our, our par Carpenter Park is that's almost double what our park is. When you walk in the park, you think, why, why all this space needed, you know, for that? So part of part of it is the the geography of the site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you very much, Roxanne. Appreciate Absolutely. you coming this evening thank and, you. and again, making your presentation. Your time. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Roxanne. Okay. Uh, then we would continue with other reports. So, uh, <coughs> Fire Chief J.P. Schilling, the Fire Department, has a short presentation or information, information yeah. delivery. Um, first of all, President Ritter, members of the board, thank you very much for uh, supporting the proclamation for Fire Prevention Week. Uh, in Carpentersville, we kind of refer it to Fire Prevention Month because we have so many activities going on uh, for public recognition of safety-related issues. Um, but I have to tell you, um, thank you on behalf of the fire department, but also thank you on behalf of myself as being the new fire chief here. Because I was driving down the road the other day and I noticed something that um, made me stop. I had to find a place to park, get out and take pictures. Um, I was driving across the Fox River on the Main Street Bridge and saw the banners that are on the light poles. And I've never seen fire department um, safety messages put in such a prominent area in such a, an area that I consider a great marketing place. And to allow the fire department to have a month of that time is, it was, is fantastic. In fact, I took pictures, sent it to colleagues of mine across the country, and mm -hmm. heard comments of everything from jealous to how'd you get that done <laughs> to um, good for you. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, and again, to the citizens, um, Please don't wait. Check the date on your smoke detectors. There is a um, there is science behind the fact that these detectors are only good for about 10 years. And if you go 10 years, then you're pushing the limits of that. Uh, it's very simple. Take them down off the wall or off the ceiling. Look at the back. It'll have a manufacturer's date. If it's more than 10 years old, replace the smoke detectors. Uh, for the elderly in the community or those that have physical disabilities, if you need help, getting those smoke detectors down, please don't hesitate to call the fire department. We'll come out to your property and we'll help you with check the dates on those smoke detectors. So again, thank you very much. I have a quick question. Yeah. Sure, Pat. Uh, JP, I just wanted to say thank you. There was a nice article. Um, I know s uh, there was some guys that were installing some in some of our seniors' homes, uh, as I recall here recently. Uh, and I just wondered, um, would there be a follow-up, JP, to make sure that they're changing the batteries or they, that they physically can, you know, get up on a ladder and change them? Oh, and that, that program was with the um, uh, Golden Dinners yeah, with yeah. the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. And um, we do not have a plan mm -hmm. uh, for the maintenance of those smoke detectors. However, uh, any citizen can call at any time if they have um, limitations of being able to Right. check the batteries, mm -hmm. we'll come out and check the batteries for them. Yeah, it was a really nice program though. 
Yeah, it's a great program, and we um, went out several times with them and mm -hmm. checked some of the seniors' homes to make sure that the smoke yeah. detectors were good and the batteries were up to date. So, yeah. thank and you. And detectors themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Just added no. it to my calendar to check my smoke detectors on Saturday. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Now, keeping with equal time, Chief Michael Kilborn. You have more items. There. A couple more items here to discuss. Uh, just this afternoon, uh, the village and the police department put out our uh, Halloween trick-or-treat hours. Um, that was sent out as a press release and also posted on the village's uh, Facebook page and the Facebook page for public safety. Uh, the hours, uh, my, it's Monday, October 31st, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and also on that press release are some safety tips, uh, which will also post the hours and some of the safety tips on the electronic sign that we share with Dundee Township Park District there at 25 and uh, 68. Um, also uh, sitting at your dais in front of you um, is an informational, an invitation to uh, those in the public for what is currently being called the Carbonsville Substance Abuse Prevention Community Coalition. And I wanna call that a working title as I try to roll it out there. Uh, what this is, is Ren Center, um, J2 Soon, which is to Terry Dudar, who has put on the uh, overdose awareness uh, uh, presentation out at our corner for a number of years, and the Congressional Police Department putting together a coalition of community uh, business owners, those within government agencies. We've invited Dundee Township Park District, District 300, um, the Boys and Girls Club, Police and Fire Department of Carpentersville, um, I'm sure I'm leaving people out, but we've sent notices out. That just went out today. Um, Ren Center has a grant to help with this coalition, and the intent is to get everyone together in one room and see how we can work to get information and services out to members in our community uh, dealing with substance abuse. So the first meeting on that is October 13th, uh, 7 to 8.30, and we are doing that at the Public uh, Works Training Room. Uh, the other item I have um, right now, unless Bob got some information in the last couple hours, um, October 16th, uh, they are still scheduled to hold the October Cross bike race at Carpenter Park, hopefully working around the construction that's going on there. But I did wanna notify you that we had previous meetings um, and that right now, October 16th, unless something has changed, they're gonna still try to hold the bike race there in the park. That, <coughs> that's and good news, yeah. Yes, and, and then the last item, before I guess I take any questions, um, <coughs> you have noticed, or may have noticed, because I sent out to you, information about um, creepy clowns. Um, this is not an issue that is simply in Carpentersville. Um, it seemed to have first come up last year, also around Halloween. Uh, well, you're, where we either have sightings of or on social media pages, notices of clowns kind of in the background on the edge of roadways, uh, in woods. Um, it's happened again this year, started to take up a little bit. Uh, Sunday night, there was a posting on, uh, on the Facebook in reference to um, a clown or someone with a name um, just simply stating, Carpentersville, Dundee Crown High School, can't wait. No threats, no information whatsoever. Um, we notified Sunday night the school, we notified our officer, um, and of course the kids at school saw it and of course started talking about it. Uh, we put up a no notice to inform our community um, of uh, just the information, but once again, no threats. Uh, we are working closely with District 300 and the other local agencies around us, because obviously Dundee Crown High School and District 300 schools are not just in Carpentersville, but we have had no concrete threats in reference to these clowns, but I can almost guarantee you that um, these type of incidents or threats or social media posting um, will continue because you get more bang for your buck because it's easy to do. Um, I likened it last night in an email to you. It's like a, a really annoying game of ding dong bit ditch and it's real difficult to catch those doing it. So uh, we'll stay on top of it. And, and certainly if there are any threats, we'll immediately uh, take action. But at this point, there are no threats. It's more of an annoyance than anything else. Any questions on any of those as I ran through them? I just had a comment. Uh, 
<coughs> on the uh, <coughs> Carpentersville Substance Abuse Prevention Community Coalition. I like the title, I do. I was wondering what we were gonna do with that, you know, uh, but it says it all right there. And <coughs> a, a little background on this, just so you know, I was approached by Terry Dudar, who does the overdose awareness. Uh, she called me up uh, and uh, presented this with the Ren Center and the uh, <coughs> the ability, maybe the ability that we could get something together. <coughs> and uh, I said, yeah, I have just the person for it. I kind of passed it over to Chief Kilborn here. Uh, <coughs> That was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Now, yes. And nice uh, yeah, and we've come a long way since then already. So it's it's a it's a looks like it could be a good program. Um, there's some money involved in it too. I don't know how that's going to work, but we'll find that out on the on the 13th, won't we? And um, <clears throat> who's going to? Are you going to be? Presented in the meeting or with yes, Terry Dudar? Um, it'll be myself. There's a, a staff person from <coughs> Rens, Terry Dudar. Excellent. Um, so at this point, at least at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, the police department and Rens Center will be acting as kind of the the initial direction, right? And, and just to get the group kicked off, mm -hmm. we will continue to participate. But at this point, you know, we're kind of at the generation of it. So right. we've taken it over because of, uh, of who we are and what we can do right. and provide the services. But I imagine that it'll be much more group-centered than the police department or REN Center right. uh, as the group gets moving. You're right, exactly. That's, that's what we'd like to see. Mm -hmm. a and, and to keep that kind of grassroots feel to it, you know, that, that these people, Terry and her organization, small organization, you know, is grassroots, you know, boots on the ground, able to, you know, present this information that is so greatly needed out there, especially for our young people. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? That would conclude the staff uh, report. Sorry, caught me in mid-candy bite up here. I just shouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> Pat, any report from your committees? Uh, yes, I do. And um, I apologize, I wanted to look. Um, I was going to go on our website. Yeah. Are now officially one committee? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ed, could you ask someone to go real quick oh. before me, and I'll be back to it so that I can okay. get my information. Thank you. Paul? Um, we had a uh, uh, Business Development Commission meeting on uh, September 27th, um, really a very brief meeting, just continuing on with our planning for the budget. Uh, we did focus on uh, westward expansion, um, things we could do out west to help improve um, uh, attracting businesses to town. And so that was the majority of our discussion and, um, and it's things we'll bring to the budget to, for the board to consider for planning purposes. So next meeting will be at the end of this month on the 25th and it'll be at 5 p.m. and it'll be on the second floor. Not anything to report to? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, from Quadcom, there's nothing uh, as of this time. But uh, from the Jelkies Creek Fox River Watershed Coalition, uh, we're moving forward on the signs, okay? Um, they're coming from the county, free of charge to the, the organization um, with the polls and everything. And we will be getting some, probably won't be until after the first year, um, for placement of those signs. We have mapped out areas, uh, not only in Carpentersville, but uh, Sleepy Hollow, you know, West Dundee, anywhere a, a creek or something like that will cross a road. So that's where we're looking to put them. We'll get probably eight, I think, here in Carpentersville. It was either six or eight. And um, they'll probably just give it, they'll just give us the signs and the poles, and then the municipality will have to put them in. And I'm sure we can imagine, we can arrange that, uh, Bob. Thank you. And um, <clears throat> again, that's for the whole uh, <coughs> watershed area, the Jelkies Creek watershed area, which extends up into Algonquin and, and such. It's a little different. So it, that was a hot topic uh, last night at the meeting. Um, the other thing is um, 
Kimball Farms is redoing their their uh, ponds, and, and they're waiting on the IEPA for approval on that. And I sure hope that comes through, uh, so they can get they got their grant money, a 319 grant. So um, Dave Pollitt, who's the uh, HSA, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> homeowners association president over there. Um, is looking forward that paperwork and they can get started on reconstructing their their detention pond in that area um, also there's going to be a cleanup down in Tyler Creek um, that is uh, they got some trees that fell into that creek so that's part of the the uh, watershed so I I don't know if I'll be down there with chainsaws trying to clean out a creek. Uh, my chainsaw days are just about ended. <laughs> no longer lumberjack. Uh, but anyways, a, that's all I have. Do you have a date on that, Don? Uh, the cleanup down there? No, I don't. I didn't write it down, but I can get that for okay, you. Okay, perfect. Then where, the, where people should move to. Mm -hmm. I'll have to get that. Maybe we'll post it on the website. My apologies, I left my phone at home and I, I wanted to kind of go over the Halloween decorating contest and ah. take it off there. So um, we had a special events uh, meeting um, and you're right, it's now Carpentersville uh, uh, Parks and Special Events Committee. Um, and we spent the majority of it talking about the upcoming Halloween contest. And I'll just go over a few things uh, very nicely detailed on our website along with the form that you would need to fill out and I encourage everyone to do it. Um, but this year we did decide we are going to just have two contest classes. Um, we're going to have the scariest one and then we're going to have a kid friendly one. And uh, then the dates that uh, this starts off, it starts October 3rd is the kickoff. Thank you, Bob. I see signs around town. I, I'm hoping we have some uh, down by Silverstone and uh, Lincolnwood Manor too. And um, then y there is a form that you can pull off the website and submit it and some of the, uh, and I think the cutoff date, uh, the submission deadline, excuse me, is October 17th. And then the judges will be out between the 18th and the 25th. And on uh, November 1st, we'll uh, award the prizes. Um, and this year, the uh, for first place, uh, looks like we've got, uh, it's kind of running together here. Um, I think it's going to be a $300 gift card from Menards or Home Depot. Runners up will be $50 gift card from Cinema and $50 from Baroni's Pizza. So you can get dinner and a movie. And uh, like as I said, we'll have those two. And there's a total of 100 points possible. And again, if you go out on the form and you look at the registration, uh, it's uh, there, uh, very good. We did some have last year's uh, decorating winners, which I thought was kind of nice to put out there. And I encourage everyone to uh, participate and uh, have a good time with it. So Halloween decorating is just about as popular as Christmas decorating anymore. So in fact, some people have their decorations, they're already been up for like two or three weeks already. So. So anyway, I'm glad that the um, uh, village uh, is uh, sponsoring this. It's board supported uh, with the staff too and uh, uh, should be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to it. So, And then I uh, just wanted to mention a couple other quick things. Um, the Yacht Fellows had a quick meeting with them, Bob and I did. Um, they, I just wanted to let the board know I, they are looking at the same weekend next year, same event, Rock the Fox. I think it's 18, 19, and 20th. Um, we pretty much think the, the park will be finished. There shouldn't be any real issues as far as them uh, being able to schedule the event again. I think they, they came to us, they were wondering. Um, they needed, uh, didn't have a big window of time last year um, before we gave the okay to do it to go out and get sponsors. And they can do that now if the board just sort of, if they think it's okay, you know, and I see everybody's nodding their head for them to hold the event again next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I talked to Mark about it too, and he said they can go ahead and, and start uh, trying to get some sponsors. Plus two, um, they wanna look into other carnivals and believe it or not, they're already booking now. Also, also their bands are, so it, they need a real, bigger window of time. Uh, they did a great job for the short window they had this year. 
And so, but it would put a little less pressure on them. So I, I said I'd mention it at the board and, and just see what you thought, if there'd be any issues about them having another event here in town. And it doesn't look like it, you know, so okay. President Ritter? Yep. Yeah, okay. All right, and the last uh, item is uh, uh, Stanford's Battery. Um, they've had, uh, they have been wanting to come before the board and thank everybody and uh, talk about their experience. And they've had a number of, they, you know, if Paul can relate, kids are in football, kids were in this, there, and, and even now, so they were at football tonight, they had called. They also have uh, s the rest of the, uh, through October, will be the end of their school presentations. So they asked if they could come to the November 1st meeting. They just wanted to talk to us about everything. And at that time too, they've got one or two more, I think, events. They're putting out their own survey among the reenactors about what they think about the various events in Illinois. And they're gonna bring those survey results to us. They're fairly certain Carpentersville just kind of blew away everything uh, this year. So, which will be good to hear. So, but uh, I know it's been a little bit of time and I kind of wondered if they were gonna come too and then, you know, we talked about it and they've just had scheduling issues. So, but if it's all right, uh, Mark, maybe we can put them on for November 1st for just a few minutes then, so, okay. And that would conclude my report then. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, our next meeting. Excuse me. Uh, I don't have my calendar in front of me. It's uh, <laughs> the October 18th. I lost without my phone. <laughs> I don't know if it's like an appendage now anymore. Uh, it, uh, come along the, is it the 18th? I believe month? so. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, excuse me. We opted to have it sooner. Uh, pardon me, I, I can see yeah. if I read Bob's. It, and the reason why is because we're having uh, it uh, before the contest so that we can wrap up anything the and 12th. then so it'll be the 12th. So thank you. And it'll be at uh, Public Works at 6.30. And that concludes my report. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, well that would then conclude our reports. Uh, we have no old business under new business. Uh, seeking board support for the development of bid documents and subsequent award of construction contract for construction of the Sacramento Drive entrance into Keith Andres Park. So we really wouldn't at this point need a motion, I don't think, but we do need to discuss this. Yeah, we just uh, w wanted to, from a staff perspective, we've spoken with uh, <coughs> Michelle from Upland Design, who's been instrumental with the river parks mm -hmm. and the upgrades that we did last year and plan on next summer, as well as the Carpenter Park master plan. And the same type of signage that is gonna go for Carpenter Park is for the entrance off Sacramento, that same wrought iron, black in color, just like the approved, mm -hmm. it'll just say Keith Andrews instead of Carp Carpenter Park. And then the kiosk that was mentioned many times is designed and then to rededicate the park to Keith Andrews, there will be a kind of a wall set up where we'll put the plaque that's currently down there but move it to a more prominent location and then add another plaque um, with more facts and details about the Vietnam War would go with that and then as an alternate bid would be the climbing rock that estimates almost as much as the other items I just mentioned. So we just want to make sure that the staff has gotten the direction and the correct uh, feedback from the Parks Committee and Audit and Finance and we'll go out with those bids and bring them back as shortly as we can, you know, have some competitive process for pricing. I got a question. Uh, the Parks Committee, did, 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 did you guys vote on that or the recommendation? No. I didn't. Well, I we, we, we talked about it. I don't it. think yeah. it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we're advisory, of course. And yeah. I, yeah, and everybody liked it, yeah. Liked it? Yeah. Including the, cl the rock climb thing? The yeah, I think everybody thought it was really going to be a, a really nice asset for it. Okay. I mean, if it's not feasible this year, I mean, it's something we can certainly look at for the future. Okay. But uh, I t everybody, well, everybody loved the kiosk and the fact that yes. it's going to, uh, the entryway will mimic the Carpenter Park and right. keep it a consistent kind nice. of a feel to it. And I personally, my own self, I love this uh, seat wall. I yes. think it's really going to be nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it'll be good. I, what is the... Uh, 
uh, you think the bids will take a little bit? We have any chance I, I of looking at it this year or we, next year? We definitely will try to get them in in November. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I, yeah. I'm, oh. okay. I'm probably going to be the only one that, <coughs> that, that thinks this, but I, if I was going to spend $50,000 on that park, I would be spending it on the park and on the amenities and rather than a $50,000 entrance. We've got so much to do in there. We've got trees to remove. We've got, uh, they have a lot more construction that uh, Camber wants to do in there. Uh, so I don't know. I think we might be putting the cart before the horse to put something really nice in there when the park is, itself is not complete. Uh, just my own personal thought. I'm not going to stand in the way of this if the board thinks that the best idea is to put this entry in, but I, I would put the entry off for a year or two years and put all the money into the park itself. Uh, just, but I, Paul, just me. Just to th that discussion, though, Ed, the, uh, the park itself, the what needs to be done, $50,000 is a lot of money, there's no doubt. But it, <coughs> it wouldn't stabilize and redirect that creek. Some trees have already been taken out. I'm sure we'll put consideration uh, and take out more as time goes on. But I, I think it all... The big part of this is that we need a 319 grant also in order to really make some headway in that park. Right. And that's, I mean, I have fingers crossed, you know, that that'll happen. But it'll be a couple of years. In the meantime, though, what we can do is kind of um, make that park more attractive, get that entryway going. The camber's done a great job. And, you know, Bob, they got the nice covering for the porta potties a little split rail fence up, some landscaping, finish that, that off. And to me, it lets folks know we're working in that park and that it's not standing still after all these years. And, and like I said, fingers crossed, we'll get the larger grant and really make some big, big improvement in that park. Yeah, but the, uh, the, the two grant and the two amounts of money are not synonymous. I mean, we wouldn't use the $50,000 to stabilize the creek, but we could use it to take out a lot of the brush and a lot of the other stuff and or contribute some of it to Camber so that they could continue their trail work. They, I think they would say, if you said, wow, could you use a little bit of money to, to speed up your trail work and get more things done in there? I, but I said, I, I'm, I'll just state my opinion and then I, I'll just leave it go because I, it's just, just me personally, but I think that suddenly we were going to have a little wooden sign and we we're going to put a few thousand dollars into it, and then it turned into overnight fifty thousand dollars, and you know, to to make a grand entrance to a park that's <coughs> partially complete. Uh, I won't say any more. Otherwise, I'll just sound like sour grapes, and I don't want to sound. Well, let's, let's board, if the board all agrees that, that that's the way to go, okay. that's yeah. fine. All right, let's we'll talk there, about we'll it. See what the prices come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah there right? could be that too. So right. cheaper than we thought. Okay, uh, let's see, Does that, that takes care of all of our stuff. Uh, so we do have trustee reports. Uh, Jeff, you want to lead us off tonight? Yeah, I don't have too much tonight other than um, I, I just wanted to say thank you to the fire department. Fire prevention month is very important. Uh, my father was a firefighter, and uh, I appreciate the chief mentioning look at your, looking at your smoke alarms for 10 years. I just thought, well, our house is 10 years old. I bet it's time to replace the smoke detector. So I put that on my calendar for this weekend. And uh, Bob, the uh, banners do look great. I noticed them immediately on the bridge down there. That, that is a wonderful thing. So that's it. Thank you. Pat? Oh, I just wanted to mention, I uh, drove by the park today, and um, it just was kind of you know, I saw some equipment dropped mm -hmm. off the other day, and then now I just, it's amazing what gets done in a day, the blink of an eye. Suddenly there's all these trails going around, and it was just uh, really nice. So I, I, I'm very excited for it. I, I think it's uh, a wonderful investment. We've, I know there was a couple of little negative feedbacks out on Facebook. Um, someone thought it should be open space. I, I have to say that's a township term not necessarily for us, and uh, it, uh, it'll have plenty of open space, or we wouldn't be able to have future events in it. So, But it'll be really nice to see that uh, park uh, 
uh, remodeled and um, I'm looking forward to a uh, decision by the board uh, with regards to uh, the band show and I, I just really excited. Also drove down a few streets that have been done. It's very nice. Edwards is uh, really nice now. You know, I, I know they're doing uh, Illinois and some of those streets and uh, just really doing a great job. So, you know, things are just really looking spruced up. Everything, everything, including our parks, even if some disagree, is an asset as far as I'm concerned with regards to this village. And we, we have to maintain it so for our residents. So after that, I would conclude my report. Thank you. <coughs> uh, really, uh, I just want to start off with a question. Does anybody know the name of that creek at the bottom of in, in the ravine in Andrews Park? Is there a name? <coughs> it's not really a creek. It's a drainage. It's drainage. Yeah, drainage. It's drainage and not a creek. As far as I know, there is it's no name. The Lake Marion uh, former yeah. dam and lake, the feed, the tribute, you know, the stormwater that fed I, the lake. I, I, I asked Gary Swick. You know Gary Swick. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <coughs> He said that name of that creek was Delta, Delta Creek. I don't know. So I would just throw that out there for you. But you know how Gary is, so <laughs> he makes it up as he goes along. Yeah, ask, him, <laughs> ask him how he knows that, Don. I, yeah. I tried to, yeah. but, you know, he's very hard to, Gary, sit down. I want to ask you something. But uh, uh, I will ask him, yeah. uh, you know, over email and stuff like that. And also I will find out when that Tyler yeah. Creek uh, I already sent him an e email, Tyler right. Creek cleanup is. Uh, but yeah, I was just curious because I did present, you know, tell him that we were looking at that creek or whatever at the uh, watershed uh, meeting uh, that um, uh, that we were gonna go in there and we're looking at it to get it uh, fixed up and stop some of the erosion and new culverts and stuff like that. So, and I would like to, <coughs> And told them that we probably need a grant for that, you know, the 319. So they might be able to help us with that a little bit. So we'll keep forging on with that. Um, also, I'd like to thank the fire department for a great presentation. I did not know that fire alarms or smoke detectors need to be replaced after 10 years, you know. So I will go home and check mine. I know I had a new one put in, but I will check the other two or three or whatever I got. Thank you very much. I also want to ch uh, thank uh, Chief Kilborn here, and I've already thanked him a lot, and he keeps saying, oh, it's a, uh, uh, Chief uh, Michael, you, you've done a great job with this uh, <coughs> substance abuse program that we're trying to get kicked off here in Carpentersville, and I really appreciate it. And I want to say thanks to Terry Dudar, too, that goes out uh, with Jason too soon her small grassroots organization and I think we're on a, a path that we can really make a difference and carry the message about overdose drug overdose awareness thank you I uh, just agree with all the comments that have been made up to this point about fire prevention week and the police department um, Pat and I'm sure many of you here go to uh, different uh, towns for festivals throughout the summer Really, I think it's important that we have consistency summer to summer. We can't be moving these around at different weeks. Yeah. Uh, you want to have consistency, and that'll uh, bring crowds. So mm -hmm. I think kind of as a rule of thumb, if we're going to have it on a particular weekend in August, you know, rock the box, and let's try to always do it that weekend. Yeah. The Civil War people around. are looking at the same, same weekend, thing. too. They yeah. are. Yeah. So I, I think mm -hmm. we just got to kind of – earmark these sure. two, three, four, five years in advance to make mm -hmm. sure that we have some consistency year to year. I agree, that's thank all. you. Yeah, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit more than I normally have here. Uh, on Thursday, I, I've been invited to a, a mayor's meeting with a couple of state, repre well, state representative Anna Moeller, and I'm not sure whether Andreessen is a senator or representative, but they're going to be at a meeting to talk with the mayors about what we'd like to see and so forth and so on. So this dovetails into a recent meeting I had with Northwest Municipal Conference. I'm on the legislative committee and we have a plan for what we'd like to see. So I'm, I'm going to bring some of these forward.
to the two representatives. One is obvious, I think, is reform of police and fire pensions, how they're calculated, uh, not necessarily how they're calculated, but how the villages have to pay, how we're paying for things that we don't plan, we don't have a say in, in how the, it's calculated, we're just said, this is the changes the legislature sent, now you guys pay for it. Uh, it's, just, it's just a totally backward system. I think Northwest Municipal is gonna actually push for a statewide one police and fire pension system that is like, uh, what's the one that the, IMRF. IMRF. And so I think that, that they see that as a viable way to make this a branch of IMRF administer it in the same way, stabilize it, and, and take it out of the hands of the village and make it a statewide program. And, and I'm gonna ask them about that. I'm gonna ask them about protection of local revenue, and especially in terms of income tax and, and what their stand is on that because we all know that our revenue is just barely keeps up. We don't have space for a 10 or 20 or 30% cut in our state income taxes, so I wanna bring that to their attention. Another big problem for us is arbitration reform. The way the law reads now, an arbitrator who just a, a guy or a woman someplace in an office says, all right, we're, we're giving this, uh, you know, the village presents its uh, final offer, the police and fire prevent, or fire prevent, send their final offer, and a guy someplace in an office somewhere says, that one is the one that's gonna be taken, and they don't have to take into account the financial costs to the village. They can approve something that we can't afford to pay for and force us to pay for it. So you have somebody who's not a resident of Carpentersville or in any way connected with Carpentersville who can force us to raise our taxes. And, and so the system is not a reasonable one. I'm gonna ask them how they're gonna take care of that. Uh, we do need a, a, a good capital bill in, in Illinois. We have infrastructure needs and ask about that. Another key one is what's called placebo reform. And if there, there are certain there, there are certain ways that you determine if a person is disabled and is eligible for attention, a, a pension, Illinois has one that is far easier to get a total disability than what the federal level one is. And I'm gonna ask why we can't go to the federal level and have a more exact and complete way of calculating disability because the way the law reads now it says catastrophic but in Illinois that can mean partial rather than completely disabled it could mean partially disabled you can't be a fireman or policeman but you could go out and do almost any other job and you still get called catastrophic and get a complete pension uh, disability pension it's just something wrong with the way it's done online sales tax is a big one that how that's gonna be distributed and so forth. But those are the main ones and I wanna ask these legislators what their feelings are on that. Are they, you know, and present what I think the municipalities would like to see for s these various things. I did wanna say while Carpenters Park, they're, they, they are really going to town. There's work going on all over that park. They're doing all the parts at once. I thought, you know, there'd be this and then there'd be this. They're not, they're doing everything at one time. This is really gonna be a good deal for us. Uh, and uh, finally, we have a couple of openings. One is on the Board of Zoning Appeals, or, or yeah, the, the Zoning Appeals. And uh, we, find, we had two openings. Actually, I finally have gotten a really good candidate for one of them, but we still have an opening on, on the BZA, and so if you're interested in getting involved in Carpentersville, that would be a really good one. It's a very important committee. Uh, we also have an opening on the Police and Fire Commission, but fortunately that was posted online, and I now have three candidates for that, which is 
for us, really unusual. We have a hard time finding people to serve on committees. And now I have three candidates, so this will be good. And if I have three candidates, I'm going to talk to one of them about thinking about the BZA because they want to, they all said we want to get involved. So maybe we can get our committees up to full strength. And that would conclude all my remarks for this evening. Uh, next thing would be closed session. We have items 2C1, 2C5, 2C6, and 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act uh, to discuss during closed session. I need a motion to move to closed session. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion, Pat. Second, Jeff. Uh, take the call. Take the roll call on that, please. Trustee Savi? Yes. Trustee Rayberg? Trustee Schultz? Yes. Trustee Burroway? Yes. Trustee Stevens, Trustee Humphrey? Yes. 